Hey everybody, Sly here, and today I'm going to be doing another reaction video, and it's all Top 5 once again, and we're continuing with this series of the Halloween special. This one is titled, 5 Most Reportedly Haunted Places in the UK. So let's take a look and see uh, what kind of haunted places they have in the UK. Bam! Hello, and welcome to All Top 5s. I did a video a while ago on some of the arguably most haunted places in the world, but I didn't include places in the UK and the USA, as these would have filled it. So I decided to do individual videos I don't for think these I've places, seen this. starting this week well, with the, the most UK. Haunted places, but there I will are so many maybe haunted houses video. and castles in the UK, but here are five that stand out most. Here we go, let's do this. Number 5. 50 Berkeley Square, London. Fifty Barkley Square. Nightingale sang in Barkley Square. Yeah, sorry. Was it a <laughs> nightingale in that popular jazz number, or was it the wailing of a ghost in the most haunted house in London? Situated in Mayfair, central London, this okay. townhouse is infamous for its hauntings and ghostly legends. It was built in around 1770 and served as the Prime Minister think of George Cannon's residence I think I heard about this uh, years before location. it was bought and sold on, ending up with oil company BP for some reason. Well known for okay. having almost no reparations or additions made to the original structure and looking almost the same as it did the year it was built, 50 Berkeley Square has some spooky stories to tell. Well, let's... The most common legend is that the ghost of a young woman haunts the attic, as she oh. committed suicide there by jumping from one of the windows. Oh, shoot. Often said to manifest as a brown mist, though some claim it's a white lady shape they see. This ghost has been huh. said to frighten people literally to death. The Prime Minister George Canning, who lived there after it was built, claimed to hear odd sounds and other ghostly happenings. A right. man who bought it after him simply locked himself in the attic and went insane before he died. Oh wow. This man, Mr. Myers, no relation, has reportedly huh. haunted visitors to the house, even causing deaths by those attempting to run away in terror. Oh, Others damn. who have stayed in the attic have also gone mad in the same way as Mr. Myers. Interestingly, since the house was bought by its new owners in the 1930s, no ghostly activity of any kind has been reported, wow. even by paranormal investigators. Huh. It's this sudden, unusual change of events that gets number 50 Berkeley Square into my list. Huh. That's Number something. four, the Edinburgh Vaults. Edinburgh Vaults. Also known as the South Bridge Vaults, a series of old chambers and the arches of Edinburgh's South Bridge have From the show one Most the Haunted, most one of my favorite shows of all time. The vaults were well, built into the arches of the of bridge, which was completed in 1788, and was used as space for taverns and tradesmen, but apparently yep. also began being used as smugglers' dens and killers' storage for bodies. Yep. Around 30 years later, even the poorest peasants had moved out owing to the damp, dark, dangerous I mean, conditions of the vaults. I mean, look at that. I mean, holy crap. In this century, paranormal investigators have researched the Edinburgh vaults, including a most haunted See? live what special did I tell you? Halloween. What did I tell you? There are claims of several different spirits haunting the vaults, taking various forms and creating very cold spots throughout the complex. I love that show. People who I love have it. stayed there overnight have reported hearing voices floating Ooh. through the chambers. Take a picture and there's like a mist. Can't be attributed or to living people smoke or anywhere near them. Indeed, one BBC TV program recorded nearly 20 minutes of voices in the vaults, oh, wow. including children shouting that couldn't be linked to nearby nightclubs or late night party locations. Very recently, the Edinburgh vaults were closed up and the public no longer allowed access, keeping oh. its secrets firmly sealed within the spooky chambers. Well, of course. Number three, Tower of London. Tower of London. The Tower of London, a big castle on the north bank of the River Thames in London, the United Look at Kingdom. That castle. That's a in my decent before, looking castle on the outside. The rat dungeon below the water level. Ooh. And with so many dungeons, tortures, and executions occurring throughout its 950-year history, it's wow, no wonder that it's been crazy. reported as one of the most haunted places in the world. The most famous ghost frequently cited by visitors to the Tower of London is that of Anne Boleyn, who was Anne beheaded Boleyn. in 1536 Ooh. by her then husband, Henry VIII. Oh my gosh, it's Henry! That she haunts the chapel section where she's buried, and has also been cited in and around the White Tower, holding her own head under her arm. Oh wow! A gruesome sight. Other famous spirits supposedly haunting the Tower of London are Lady Jane Grey, Henry VI, Margaret Pole and the so-called Princes in the Tower. Princes in the Richard. Tower? 
There have been some more unusual sightings though. In the early 1800s, a tower guard reported seeing the ghost of a bear lunging towards him. What? This took such a toll on him that he actually died of fright not long after. Wow. The following year, another apparition was spotted by the keeper of the crown jewels at that time, who witnessed a bright ghost hovering above his wife who cried out, Oh Christ, it has seized me. The list of hauntings over the years goes on, even to this day, making the Tower of London another seriously haunted place on my list. Wow. Number, Number two. Number two. Pluckley Village, Kent. Pluckley, located in Pluckley. the picturesque plains of Kent, England, is Pluck widely agreed Pluckley to be the most village haunted Kent. village in the whole country, even according to the Guinness Book of Records in 1989. Oh. It's home to St. Peter's Hall, an occasional concert location. LV Farm, a historically important example of Tudor age stables and farmhouses, and Surrenden Manor, the location that the earliest extant manuscript text of a William Shakespeare play was discovered. Huh. But Pluckley has far more than its fair share of local legends and paranormal residents, no fewer than 12 in fact. A highwayman, Robert Dubois from the 18th century, Robert is said to reenact his violent death regularly, in which he was claimed to have been killed by the sword as he hid in a hollow tree stump, in Ooh. an area aptly known as the Screaming Wood. Screaming the wood. form of a woman is often seen on Pinnock Bridge, and is known locally as the Gypsy or the Watercress Woman. She is supposed to have either drowned in the stream beneath the bridge as she collected watercress to sell, or to have accidentally set herself alight and burned to death while both smoking her pipe and drinking gin. At the LV farm that I mentioned, a farmer from the 1700s is said to haunt the site with his final words before he had shot himself, with oh. reports of, I will do it, being whispered I and will heard do by it. many. There are claims that the Damn. silhouette of a man, the miller, haunts the old windmill's ruins that burned oh, wow. down in the 1930s. Another man, known as the Screaming Man, is heard screaming as he reenacts his death when well, he's yeah. suffocated under a collapsed as wall it's of called clay the screaming in the pit of Pluckley Brickworks. There are three women, known as the Red Lady, the White Lady, and the Lady of Rose Court, all of whom haunt areas in the village. The Red Lady has been seen haunting St. Nicholas's churchyard with her small white dog. The White Lady haunts inside the church itself, and the Lady of Rose Court, who poisoned herself in anguish over her situation with multiple lovers, has been seen too. The ghosts of a hanged school head teacher, a hanged colonel, a poltergeist at the local inn, and a phantom horse-drawn carriage have all also wow. been reported, with the coach and horses still heard and seen recently. What an astounding and you think this is fairy tale that in that? definitely no, gets Rocky Village into my top five, at number two no less. But what's number one? That's the question. Number one. Borley Rectory, Essex. Borley I've Rectory. seen this one in ghost books and programs since I was a young child, and now the name Borley Rectory gives Borley. me the creeps whenever I read or see it. Built in 1862 and lived in by the priest of Borley Parish and his family, the Borley Rectory was reputed to be one of the most haunted houses in England, if not the world. Unfortunately, the rectory almost burned down in 1939 and it was finally oh. demolished in 1944, but not before a plethora of hauntings were reported in books, newspapers, and television programs. Oh, wow. The first ghostly occurrences started up right after the Borley Rectory was built, back in 1863. People spoke of unexplainable footsteps and other noises for years, until 1900, when the four girls who lived in the rectory, daughters of the priest, saw a ghostly nun early at night. Hmm. They approached her, but she vanished completely without trace. Into These the sightings air. happened regularly, people claiming to see all sorts of spirits in and around the rectory over the following 40 years or so before it was brought down. Indeed, there were even reports of a phantom coach being driven by a pair of Another headless phantom. horsemen. Classic ghostly stuff. Yeah. A later occupant of the house in the late 1920s found a skull in a paper bag while cleaning one of her cupboards, amidst daily incidents of disconnected servant bells ringing by themselves, footsteps around the mansion, and unexplained lights in the windows. They also claimed to see a ghostly horse and carriage at night. The newspapers got hold of the stories, and Borley Rectory's growing fame attracted a paranormal researcher, Harry Price, to the, the location. Hell? He witnessed plenty of activity, including unexplained stones being thrown, oh. and after allegedly faking some spirit messages on a mirror, he declared the house free of ghosts. As soon as he left, however, they began again. After a long time left unoccupied, the rectory saw habitation again in 1930 when the Foister family moved in. 
Immediately, they began to witness paranormal activity such as bells ringing, stones being thrown, writing on the walls, windows being smashed, and I cannot doors understand. being locked, Tell me more. without explanation. I still cannot understand. The Reverend's Please wife, don't. Marianne Foister, even experienced direct poltergeist activity when she was thrown from her bed, oh, and their shoot. daughter was attacked by what they described as something horrible. Oh. Despite the Reverend trying to exorcise the spirits from the rectory himself, the incidents continued, and even self-proclaimed psychics who read the newspaper stories visited and couldn't do anything about the phenomena. They did, however, think that most of the paranormal events were being caused by negativity from Marianne Foister, whether she was doing it consciously or not. Actually, Marianne later admitted that she exaggerated some claims of the paranormal activity to cover up an affair that she was having with a lodger living with them at the time. Oh, Still wow. though, this doesn't discount all of the activity and the other activity witnessed over the many years. And although some investigations were held after the Foisters moved out, not all of the incidents could be explained so easily, and some not at all. A truly haunted house that easily hits the top <sighs> of my list, no question. I wonder what lies in store for the house built on that site now. Yeah, that's the biggest and that's question. And that's it from all top fives for this week. Wow, What do you that think of something. these five that I've chosen in the UK? I've missed out a fair few other places in the United Kingdom, so I might have to revisit this topic in the future, and the yeah, US, definitely. of course. Please be polite and considerate in the comments when you're discussing these, because some people do believe in ghosts, some people don't, and yep. we all do have different opinions. Yes. Let's just respect that. All right. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like on YouTube. That would be really cool. And you can subscribe for a new video every single Tuesday. Peace and love to each and every one of you, and I'll see you all next time on All, all Top, top fives. fives. Well, well, that was something. That was very something to one of these haunted locations in the UK. But if I have to choose which one of the haunted locations in the UK that I like seeing from like TV shows and stuff like that, like Most Haunted, which is one of my favorite shows, one of my favorite ghost hunting shows of all time. I would have to say in the UK, Chillingham Castle. Now, I wonder if uh, Steve uh, did a second part of the most haunted places in the UK, but I had to check it out next time. But but yeah, that was that was the video. Some good, good haunted location there. That's something that one of these days I would like to go to haunted places like that. But no, I'm I'm. I prefer to stay right here where it's safe. So, anyways, if you guys can grow enjoy this video, give it a like. If you want more videos like this, hit the subscribe button for more videos. And don't forget to hit the notification bell for more videos to come. So, that's all the time I have for this video. My name is Sly. Thank you for watching. And I hope you enjoyed me reacting to the old top fives. Five most reportedly haunted places in the UK. And until next time, sleep tight.